Start with the rabbit fire round. At what age do you want to retire? And um, 62. How long does it take you to get ready in the mornings? About half an hour. The most embarrassing moment of your life? Oh, I can't think about the top of my head to be honest. It's just too many. Favorite color? It's purple. What time of day are you most inspired? Between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. How many hours of sleep can you survive what? Five and a half, six. Fill in the blank. An upcoming technology trend is blank. Oh, Chelsea Bay is intriguing. The city in which the best kiss of your life happened? London. The biggest mistake of your career? Um, not during the army, uh, during the army early. How do you relax? I go to the gym. How many cups of coffee do you drink per day? None. A habit of yours that you hate? Energy drinks. The most valuable skill you've learned in life? Empathy and communication. Your favorite Netflix show? At the moment, Manifest. Uh, one word description of your leadership style? Um, inclusive. Coffee or tea to kick starter? Tea. Top priority in your daily schedule? Organization. Ideal vacation spot for relaxation? The Caribbean. Key factor for maintaining a work life balance? My children. Uh, well, that's the end of the rapid fire round. Let's go on to the longer questions, which you can answer with as much time and ease as you like. Uh, the first one is, uh, what key insights do you plan to share at Beaver Tech uh, regarding AI-powered social listening and its transformative potential for businesses, data intelligence strategies? A great question. So, um, during our speech, we're going to talk about how we can use AI to better detect risk. Yeah. So, one of the big things is risk is you can avoid risk, but you can prepare for risks. And so, using artificial intelligence and a number of functionalities, you're able to identify things before they become a real uh, relevant risk and so in doing that you prepare to mitigate act and respond so how do you see ai and data intelligence then shaping the future landscape of decision making itself and this is a making processes for businesses particularly in the realm of risk advisory and intelligent services so i think as the world's transformed over the last number of decades we're more interconnected being more interconnected means you need more data points to understand those connectivities and actually the implications of events. So historically, a small business might have a risk that would be one layer deep, whereas now a business is interconnected across the countries that it which the operator could be 10, 20, 100 countries, the third party risk. And so to get that data is, is one thing, but actually to understand it without technology and AI, you're not able to actually granularly look at that data. And so... As we move forward looking at a risk in particular, that data and that technology underpins it is imperative to the future. And so how can once that data is collected, how can it be how can AI be used to use that data to effectively detect risks and increase an organization's resilience itself? Absolutely. So uh, I mean this is a couple of us to tech. So we use a number of things like match language processing, name entity recognition, um, artificial intelligence. To identify risk that could be in relation to a business, a regulatory change, a geopolitical event. And then once you identify that risk, you then use those technologies again to actually compartmentalize those risks into sub areas. So thinking about maybe geopolitical, is it a change in government? Is it a change in uh, a cabinet, in a policy? You then go down the next layer. We then overlay humans in that loop with machine learning, what the humans are interacting that data with, it becomes smarter over time. So the AI learns with the ML that actually what's relevant, what's not relevant to an individual organization. And so that process of learning technology, that human interface always at the forefront of it means that we can actually mitigate those risks and create that resiliency in a business. So besides human and face, are there any other ways that Deloitte ensures the accuracy and reliability of data-driven risk assessments, uh, especially considering the dynamic nature of threats in today's business environment? Yes, I think... Um, one thing we always do it 
with all of our data is actually we do like what we call a, a capture rate assessment. So understanding how accurate our data collection is. So it's great getting lots of data in, but actually, is it relevant to what you're looking at? Is it accurate to what you need to be? And is anything missed? And so doing that analysis with technology, but also that um, that repetitive niche that so thinking about say a regulatory change has the data set against every regulator, against every regulation, and just validating that with the technology to make sure it's accurate. And that is a real key component of what we try and do to make sure that what we are delivering is relevant and uh, timely and accurate. And what about making critical business decisions? How does Deloitte use our data to inform business decisions for their clients? Yeah, I mean, good question. So I think uh, there's a big difference between data and intelligence. So data is the collection of data points and understanding what that is. But intelligence is the, the synthesization of that data into relevant um, decision-making, informative pieces of intelligence. So that could be layering in different uh, d- uh, data feeds. It could be combining data feeds, under- understanding trends, volume, sentiment. And that is really the difference that we try to uh, impose within our data sets that we deliver to clients. So it's not looking at mass data, they get the relevant data that has been synthesized for their decision making and then they inform that they do that. So given the mass amount of data that is available in general, how does Deloitte ensure data privacy and security while leveraging data analytics to provide these value-added services? Yeah, I mean, great question. So we've got a very robust security uh, system within um, the firm. So everything is tested. We go through GTUM um, accreditation, all of our ISO 27001. So everything is rigorously checked. We then uh, compartmentalize the teams that are using that data as well. So it's on a need to know basis. So everything is stored securely on the cloud and within the environment of each team. And then within those teams, each client gets their own client space as well. So there's no interference or cross sharing of that data amongst clients and outside the team that need to see it. So let's go on to a more fun question. <laughs> what is your typical day when you wake up look like? Give us a overview of your schedule you wake up in the morning and that so i spend two hours doing emails whilst feeding the kids in the morning before work starts Uh, and then generally my day is interacting with clients understanding their problems and how we can best help them and then position our team to go do that so that's working with our tech teams to do our collection and understand the requirements from a data perspective work with our delivery teams to actually take that data synthesize it and create those outputs for our clients and then just that loops back around and that not, not necessarily sequential, it could be little bits here and there, but ultimately the fourth of everything we do is the client's concerns and making sure what we deliver them is the highest standard. So how much of this time is usually taken up with meetings? Um, far too much. I'd say probably like six, seven hours a day. Um, so at, in the role that I do, it's very much in that business development and client relationship space. So it takes up most of my time. Uh, luckily, I've got some very capable people on the team that do the delivery and technology. And what advice would you have for job seekers looking to get into this field? Great question. I think the biggest thing that we look for isn't necessarily a particular skill set. It's the willingness to learn and the openness to approaches and that diverse um, nature of Deloitte. So quite often, if you look at job descriptions in Deloitte, it'll list a whole bunch of things. But fundamentally, it's communication, the ability to learn, and the willingness to learn above all else. So as the head of Deloitte's Intelligence Services Center, what are some key elements of your marketing strategy to showcase the center's capabilities and attract clients seeking intelligence and risk advisory services? Um, yeah, great question. So a big part of what we try to do is eminence around our products. So we have a central marketing team that look at different products that we offer clients and we do campaigns around that. So that's attending events like today. Uh, it's going to um, networking events that are held by others that are very specific to a use case to be it around compliance or third parties. Uh, and then creating that brand eminence through LinkedIn primarily and how we communicate our thoughts and feelings and actually express knowledge in the sector to our clients and interact with them in that way. Uh, and that's shown some great traction over the last couple of years in doing that. So in an increasingly competitive market like we have today, what innovative tactics or channels do you uh, utilize besides LinkedIn to differentiate Deloitte's intelligence service center and position it as a trusted partner over client seeking strategic uh, intelligence solutions? Yeah, one thing we've really started to do recently is partner with smaller uh, startups uh, and smaller tech companies. So 
how we can use what we have within our team to uh, influence and support their development. But conversely, using their new technologies to actually influence what we do, so working together and collaboratively. And that is one of the reasons why I'm here today uh, with that one of our key partners, Digimind. So how we work together to create products for our clients is really part of how we grow that confidence. So we heard that you were a finalist at the Isle of Man Innovation Challenge 2024. What innovative ideas or approaches have you and your team developed? And how do you believe they can contribute to addressing pressing challenges in the intelligence and risk advisory sector? Yeah, so we got to the final uh, our product called Intelligence as a Service. That is essentially taking all of our modular um, services that we've developed over the last eight years in the team, combine that in a holistic risk platform. So at the enterprise level, you could do a multitude of things. You can do third-party risk, uh, regulatory risk, ge geographical risk, uh, brand and sentiment, and really allowing clients, rather than having a single service from a single provider, we can provide everything in one place. And the real difference in how we've really innovated that is the rollout of generative AI. So a lot of what we summarize with our outputs is done through generative AI. Uh, I've already mentioned we use NLP, uh, NEI in the background, as well as AI and ML. Uh, and the, I guess the value add that Deloitte can bring is the SMA input. So every service that we deliver and modules of that, we give the option to then plug into experts across Deloitte. So our global network. So if you needed a risk expert in a particular area, we can do that. So in general, how do you approach innovation within your role at the company? And what strategies do you use to foster a culture of creativity and experimentation within your team? And um, great, really good question. So for innovation, I think I've already mentioned we partner with some smaller businesses and startups. I think that's really key because most delight is great, but most of the best thing is done by innovative new businesses. And so understanding what they're doing and helping them. And then how we then post that within our team is actually we have a a development team and their mandate is to make our product better and that can come with round tables interacting with vendors and clients and really generating ideas there's no bounds of what they're allowed to do uh it, it's essentially the end goal is to make our product better and, and and they do that however they see best and so the development team works under your team or is it independent and it's allowed to just cross all departments so it's within our team yes so it, uh, we've got our own development team um they also then reach back into the larger development team within our, our parent organization. So let's talk a bit about content marketing. Uh, content marketing plays a significant role in establishing thought leadership. How does Deloitte's Intelligence Services Center develop and distribute content to educate and engage target audiences? And what types of content have you found to be the most effective in driving engagement at generating rates? So th there's probably three areas that we, we focus on. One is snapshot um, posts on LinkedIn talking about a topic of the day and a service that could respond to that. The other is longer forms. We, we've done some long written uh, white papers in partnership, not just with our team, but broader teams in the business. And the other one is attending events where we are hosting. So speaking to this like Chamber of Commerce, um, startup events like we did last night, uh, and creating that eminence around a particular topic, not necessarily the whole package of what we do, but taking something to say like operation resilience or third party risk, getting experts in the room and talking about the problems uh, and really getting those thoughts from across the industry and understanding their problems and how we can support them more, uh, more broadly. So do you have any interesting story about any particular content strategy that you that comes to mind now? Oh, not necessarily off the top of my head, no, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, We've got we've had some great events. Uh, actually, I, I was telling Roman earlier, uh, my friend, um, I was at an event and we had a video that was going to be doing a demo uh, and it was supposed to be silent uh, because the actual sound of it was people talking about the demo in itself. And I got on stage in front of about 500 people and the narration of like, click left, click right, what should we do at this stage was played over the speakers. And so that was slightly embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> I managed to turn it off. So let's talk a bit about your career. It has spanned roles in military and government intelligence, risk advisory, and leading Deloitte Intelligence Health Center. How have these diverse experiences shaped your approach to tackling complex challenges and providing strategic guidance to clients? So I think the foundation of that's come from the military. So in the military, I was in intelligence. And the first thing about the military is that harnessing of a team spirit and ethics. And that's really traveled through in everything that I've done since then. Um, and within those roles, uh, I had tactical level roles, but uh, my, my latter half of my career is ran strategic. So 
thinking about things from a bird's eye view. So not just necessarily what is happening, but what may happen, how the, that impacts those in proximity, what we're looking at. I mean, that's really helped me through my, my latter stage in my career. And so those founding principles that the military gave me are really core to what we still do now. So how was the pivot from military to this sector? Was it easy? Was it a bit tough? Was it interesting? It, I mean, it's interesting. I, I transitioned uh, in between roles to the tech company, which is really helpful. So I, I had two years at uh, a business called Data Miner, uh, really innovative uh, real-time alerting business. And that was probably the, the biggest step in terms of moving away from the military that helped me set up my time for like. So you're going to talk about AI powered social listening. How do you leverage speaking engagements at industry events to position yourself and the lights intelligence of the center as thought leaders in the field? Yeah, I mean, again, correct good question. So I think it's really important. Um, in these events, I've found that having a stand is one thing, but actually being able to speak and talk about what you see as the industry, how the technology and how we can actually support clients is more relevant. You get more understanding, you get more interest and traction. I think. This week alone, I've had like 300 LinkedIn requests uh, off the back of just the tech advertising the session we've got today. So um, it's really great for eminence building. Well, so the last question for you is of a personal kind. What would you be doing in your life if not this? Um, look, I'd probably start my own business, if I'm honest, if I was at uh, Deloitte. Uh, it's something that I, I've thought of, but um, I've got a great role at Deloitte, and so that's not on the cards at the moment.